All right, guys, so we got to talk about something that I've been actively warning about on my channel for a long, long, long time, which is the biggest, most dangerous domestic terror threat to this country, which in my humble opinion is the people in this country that are actively being radicalized by the Democrat Party and their rhetoric, okay? Um, as this story right here that we're going to talk about, a man by the name of Isaac A. Informgun um, threatened Senator Ted Cruz over his voting rights being taken away, okay? And we all know who is pushing the conspiracy that black people's voting rights are being taken away. Now, I want you guys to watch this news clip of this situation going on out in Texas in which this man is issuing death threats to Ted Cruz over a Democrat conspiracy theory. Take a look. Moving on now to a story that you first hear right here on Fox. A Houston man is accused of threatening to kill Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Well, Fox 26's Sherman Dizel joining us live now to talk about the details. And Sherman, this guy is now on the run. Yeah, that's right, Rashi. The Harris County DA's office says that he was supposed to to show up in court today and fail to do so, there is now an active warrant out for his arrest. Let's take you into what we have known so far from authorities and released court documents. They say that Isaac Formangum of Richmond, he made a call to Ted Cruz's office on June 26th. And according to court documents, Formangum made cryptic remarks to Cruz about his intent to have the Voting Rights Act repealed. Here's an excerpt of the voicemail. Authorities say he told Cruz, quote, every last one of your Republican colleagues who have signed off on that platform is to be found and is to be found and killed, be it by a bullet to the face or by the smashing of a brick in your skull. Pretty strong words. We spoke with our senior legal analyst, Chris Tritico, about these allegations. He says, many people may wonder why was the man granted bond in the first place? Well, Tritico says that's because it's state law. Texas Constitution does not allow them to say, we don't like what you said about Ted Cruz, so we're going to hold you without bond. The law doesn't allow it. They had to grant him a bond. The fact that he jumped bond now gives them a reason when they bring him back to raise his bond really high. So, so far tonight, we have not received any comment from Ted Cruz's office on this matter. When we do, we'll let you know. But coming up at 9 o'clock, we're going to hear more from our legal analyst on what this case could mean for the suspect who's on the run and how it can change once he is caught and arrives back in court. Reporting from downtown Sherman to sell Fox 26 News. Yeah, so it is obvious what this is, guys. This is a product of the Democrat Party and their radical extreme rhetoric they are actively radicalizing people in this country especially so-called minorities right and so-called people of color and people that are supposedly discriminated against okay Th that is what they're doing and this is the result of that okay you have a man whom based off a democrat conspiracy theory that the republican party is trying to take away black people's voting rights up uh, basically issued a death threat to a senator okay now are you going to see any democrats come out here and condemn that right are you going to see them come out here and say no no this is wrong okay you should not be threatening politicians are you going to see this on mainstream media nope right you're not going to see it on cnn you're not going to see it on msnbc they're not going to talk about it they're not going to talk about it but i guarantee you i guarantee you if a republican had threatened or a conservative had threatened a Democrat politician over something that Democrats had did that Republicans or conservatives don't agree with, it would be all over mainstream media, right? They'd be talking about how the Republican Party is a party of radical extremists, right? Are the Republicans radicalizing people in their party? But Democrats actively do that in silence, crickets. Again, this is as we're seeing radical extremist protesters that are trying to intimidate Supreme Court justices. There was an attempted assassination on a Supreme Court justice. Democrats said nothing, right? They said nothing. Again, this is what has happened in our country, guys, and I've been warning about this. I've been warning about it and warning about it and warning about it. I've been telling you, the biggest domestic terror threat to this country is not white supremacy. It's not. It is woke extremism. It is woke supremacy because that's what this is. 
There's no proof whatsoever that Republicans are trying to take away the voting rights of black people. In fact, out in Georgia, the place where the Democrats protested the most over the so-called voter suppression laws there, there was a record turnout among so-called minorities in the Georgia primary. And only one Democrat was running, right? That was Stacey Abrams when we talk about the governor race. So again, where is all the voter suppression? Where is it that black people can't vote? Because I'm not seeing any state in this country that does not allow black people to vote. I'm not seeing it. But Democrats have come out here and said the same line over and over and over again. And it has radicalized people to actually believing that the Republican Party is trying to take away black people's right to vote. And this is what happens, right? This is the result of that. Oh, the, oh, the Republicans are trying to take away my right to vote. They're trying to take away my fundamental rights. I need to take up arms, right? I need to threaten politicians, issue death threats. That's what's happening. And again, the worst part about it is that this will be ignored. This will be swept under the rug. Nobody's going to talk about it. Nobody's going to talk about the radicalization of the left in this country. But every time you look, these people are responsible for the largest acts of violence in this country. Political violence. BLM riots, Antifa riots, Roe v. Wade riots. You got this, <laughs> right? These people are responsible for the most political violence in this country, and it's not even close. But yet we're constantly being lectured about how all the political violence in this country is coming from people on the right. And I'm like, well, what? Where is the political violence from people on the right? I'm not seeing it. In between a few instances that are few and far between, that are one off. Political violence from the left has become normal, right? It's been normalized. It's totally fine to be violent if you're on the left. You're just fighting for civil rights, right? You're fighting for social justice. You're on the right side of history. But if you're a conservative and you, you know, exercise your right to free speech or you protest, or you riot or whatever, you're insurrectionist, right? You're insurrectionist. Again, it's crazy how this works, man. It's crazy how this works. But uh, yeah, uh, the Democrat Party, um, I hate to say it, but you know, with each and every passing day, some of the things I'm saying about some of these woke extremists, um, something bad is going to happen and they're going to have blood on their hands, man. If they do not rein in the extremism in their party, Something bad is going to happen and they're going to have blood on, on their hands. I hope and pray that it does not happen. But I got a bad feeling about where the woke extremism is headed in this country. I really do. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.